villagers are beginning to rebel against the Archivoker's rule, and it seems someone helped his prisoners escape. So, the Archivoker has summoned me from the void to put a stop to this madness. Make sure to like, subscribe, and watch to the end to see what cool powers I unlock and how this chaos spreads into the nether. Now, here's 100 days as an illusioner in hardcore Minecraft. Day 1, the Archivoker welcomed me to his plane of existence before immediately leaving the room and telling me to follow. He left his mansion and made our way to a nearby prison that looked like it had seen better days, and he introduced me to his general and warden before going off to tend to other matters, leaving me under the general's command. Yes, the spell worked! I've only heard stories of your existence, but now here you are! This world feels so familiar, yet I feel so strange being here. Why is that? You are the rumored illusioner, a stealthy wizard with powerful magic. Legend has it, the creators decide to you, but let left you in the void for some reason. Now though, we needed your help, so the Archivoker summoned you from the void. Magic? Void? <laughs> Wait, help with what? The Archivoker's rule is being challenged by some rebellious villagers who we think caused Redstone Golem to escape. We need you to track it down and defeat it. Then you can help fight the rebellion. Sounds like some exciting adventures. I'm always happy to help Illager kind. Take a few days to get some materials and test out your abilities. Then meet me back here with the Warden to begin your investigation. After speaking with the General, I left the prison and began to explore this beautiful beautiful world that I was summoned into. I figured I should start by collecting some wood, so I traveled to the outskirts of the forest as to not mess with the landscape near the mansion. But as I made it through the tree line into an open field, I saw a dragon flying in the distance, quickly approaching me. I was stunned as it spewed flames out from its mouth and told me about this video sponsor, Dragon City, a free-to-play mobile game that you can play on all devices using the link in my description. Build your own dragon empire and collect food, gold, and gems to grow your city and reach new levels. There are thousands thousands of dragons to collect, including some of your favorite YouTubers like Dream, Fundy, Preston, and several others. You can breed dragons together, mixing different elements and rarities to get new dragon eggs, and once they hatch, feed them to evolve. Then, train your dragons and take them into battle to make them more powerful. Face off against your friends and other dragon masters in epic PvP battles, and join an alliance to interact with other players, and participate in exclusive events to unlock special rewards. There are also several minigames to play every week, and a battle pass where you can claim new prizes and dragons every Day. When you download the game using the link in my description, you will receive a special starter pack with 15,000 food, 30,000 gold, and the fortune dragon for free. So go get the game and let me know which YouTuber dragon is your favorite. The dragon that told me about this awesome game was a little too scary, so I ran back into the forest to play some Dragon City and collect some resources. After spending some time collecting wood, I fashioned together a sword and went on the hunt for food for the rest of the day. I was trying my best to adjust to this physical realm and deal with an unsettling hunger, something I've never had to deal with in the void. Day 2 was mostly spent getting used to my new surroundings, exploring the nearby lands, and trying to connect with the other illagers. However, I had a feeling they did not like me or something. I'm not sure why they weren't too welcoming, although I did get along with the Archivoker's pets. I spent the night of day 2 into day 3 exploring the nearby caves to upgrade my gear. I mined plenty of iron. Once I got myself some better tools and armor, I used my illusion magic to conceal what I was wearing. As the sun was getting close to setting on day 3, I exited the caves and ran into a small group of what the illagers folk called mountaineers. They fired arrows at me with their crossbows, so I ran into the nearby forest and quickly summoned an illusion of myself closer to them, which they happily turned their attention to, thinking it was me. Once they had defeated my illusion, they started to leave, so I headed back to the mansion, unsure why they would attack a fellow illager. On day four, I decided I was ready to investigate inside and around the prison. The destruction that had occurred when the redstone golem escaped was pretty obvious, but I was not sure why he didn't escape sooner. That's until I looked inside his cage and saw strange growing crystals. Someone managed to slip past the guards and give it these crystals, but the guards didn't want to talk to me about it. They seemed pretty terrified over the whole ordeal. So I started to head toward the direction they said the Redstone Golem went, but had little luck. Since it was getting dark, I headed back to the mansion to report to the general. At the start of day five, I was told by the other illagers that the general had a task for me. After a bit of wandering around, I eventually found him commanding these small group of illagers to start doing repairs around the prison. Oh good, I was just about to send for you. Sorry, I got turned around. In addition to the prison escape, someone also stole a powerful staff from us that my pillager captains picked up from a jungle witch. We need to find whoever did all this, but for now, I have been handed a different mission for you to complete. The Archivoker said it suited your particular talents. What's the mission? We want you to observe a nearby village as a target for a raiding party. A raiding party? The villagers have been increasingly defiant recently, and we wish to put a stop to any potential rebellions against the rule of the Archivoker. A raid helps to put them back in their place, so to speak. Well, I'm happy to help. Make sure they don't see you. Although I'm certain that won't be a problem, I want to send as little troops as needed to attack since there's a lot of villagers to go to. Following the directions given to me by the general, I headed off to the village straight away. I hid in the shadows, keeping my distance as I observed, and I saw villagers planting
planting and harvesting crops, some were throwing things at each other, trading I think, and others were just wandering around and nodding at each other. Nothing really much to report, so I headed back to the base with the information for the general. On the morning of day 6, I overheard a group of illagers speaking about me, called me strange and said I didn't belong here, thinking I was too unusual and creepy looking to be around them. I was cheered up when I joined a group listening to the illager chef talking about an amazing daring escape he had made from a prison deep in the nether when he went there to collect mushrooms. He told us about how he used a bed to blow up his cell and fought his way to freedom through armored piglins with just his spatula. After that epic tale, I overheard some royal guards talking about wanting to spar against each other in a training ring that sounded pretty interesting. And then I went to give the general my report on the village, but he looked really busy so I gave my notes to one of his guards. For day 7, I wanted to practice my fighting skills so I went to speak with several different illagers, but every one of them ignored me or refused to train with me. So I took it into my own hand and went to a training ring by myself, summoned an illusion, and sparred with my illusion for the day. Now better equipped and practiced, I spent days 8 and 9 exploring the nearby hills trying to track down the redstone golem, but I eventually got lost and arrived at an outpost at the foot of a giant mountain. I spied on a large group of mountaineers, similar to the ones that I had escaped from before as they patrolled around the outskirts of a formidable looking fortress, always on alert as if anticipating an attack. Being all by myself, I decided to head back to the mansion. On the morning of day 10, I saw two pillager captains talking with one another away from the other villagers. When they noticed me, they nodded for me to approach them. So you're the illusioner we've heard everyone talking about. Is that good or bad? Most likely bad from the illagers, but the general speaks highly of you, and the archivoker is very excited to have you here. Are we going to ask him? Ask me what? Remember that village you scouted out the other day? We've been tasked with doing a mini raid of sorts on the villagers there. You want to join us? I've never been on a raid before. Don't worry about that. It's easy. We just show the villagers. We show them who's boss around here. And if you find something useful on the way, then you can help yourself do it. Well, yeah, sure. I'll come along. Great. Can't wait to put your cool magic to use. Nice. If you're ready, then let's head off. The rest of day 10 was spent with me distracting the villager guards with my illusion running around as the pillager captains went in, broke doors, smashed chests, and chased the villagers around. I went in while my illusion did its work and grabbed some food and some other resources. And then we regrouped as the village was in chaos with my illusion providing us an easy exit distraction. While out and about with the pillager captains on days 11 through 12, we split up the loot we had obtained and fought off a few attacks of mountaineers that were wandering the area. They apparently defied the rule of the archivoker, but with their leader now defeated, there's only a remnant of rebels left who still want to rule. They also mentioned to me that they had another adventure lined up and asked me if I was interested in joining them on their escapades. We took the scenic route home and ended up sneaking into some abandoned mine shafts and taking whatever treasure we could find, then camped there on the night of day 12. We returned to the mansion on the night of day 13, reporting back to the general that the raid was a success and that the villagers shouldn't be as rebellious for a while. Then the general wanted me to update him on my progress in hunting down the redstone golem. I told him that I had lost the trail as I headed near the mountains, where I found some mountaineers at a cool looking outpost. The general pondered for a moment and then told me that I may have returned to the redstone mines, as they were in the same direction as the mountains. He also began to mention a mountaineer rebellion, but walked off, though I left to find a place to unload my loot and went to bed. On days 14 and 15, I traveled back to the mountains and arrived at the redstone mines to see piles of collected redstone, blocks of magma, and weird blue glowing crystals peppered around the place, the same ones from the prison. I followed this trail inside and entered a giant chamber where the redstone golem sat dormant in the center on a platform, surrounded by more redstone, magma blocks, and those eerie crystals. I slowly approached, not wanting to provoke it just yet. Then, a flash of red light blasted out, and that's when I noticed a goat and axolotl standing by the golem with a floating staff. But my attention was quickly torn to the redstone golem, or should I say a monstrosity, that was now waking up. The crystals, magma, and redstone blocks were all absorbed by this monstrosity, and I quickly threw my hands and ran out of there, leaving an illusion copy of myself behind to distract the attacks from the creature. I returned to the Illager mansion on day 16 and told the general about the redstone golem, and now that it had been empowered and transformed somehow. He was really confused how a goat managed to steal the staff and help a golem escape prison, but he cared more about stopping the now monstrosity and directed me to the prison to speak with the warden for advice about fighting redstone mobs. The warden was very concerned when I told him about what happened, and he said I should upgrade my gear and craft up a lot of healing potions if I wanted any hope in being able to defeat it. So the Illager cleric showed me how to make those potions, now I just needed the ingredients. The next day, I was practicing my magic, creating an illusion of myself and trying to make it do different things. And that evening, I was interrupted by the Illager chef, and he told me that he needed my help to retrieve his trusted pan from the nether. He showed me where the Archivoker's nether portal was, and then headed off back to the kitchen.
addition. He couldn't just use any pan as this had been handed down to him from his father and could add that extra kick to the dishes that he made. Without it, he was lost. I agreed to help him because he said he'd help me get the ingredients for the potions I need. Days 18 through 20, I spent journeying through the nether and in my travels, I saw a goat running off in the distance past a group of piglins. Could it be the same goat as before? I ignored it for now and followed the chef's directions. I stealthily retraced his steps until I found that prison he spoke of before. I figured before trying to sneak into the prison, I should scout around the area to look for the pan. I found what looked to be a piglin merchant cooking with the chef's pan over a fire for a few other piglins. So I used my magic and summoned a copy of myself next to the fire. The merchant dropped the pan and ran quickly away followed by the piglins. I retrieved the pan and headed back to the mansion to give the illager chef back his heirloom. And that's when he rewarded me a bow with arrows for me to use in my missions, as well as told me the location of a nether fortress. On day 21, before I headed back into the nether for the nether wart and blaze rods for health potions, the illager chef told me to make sure that I would replant some of the harvested nether wart just to ensure that I didn't anger the residents. I thanked him and went into the portal, quickly finding the nether fortress. I retrieved several stacks of nether wart while my illusion kept watch for any guards. Then we fought some blaze for rods before making our escape. Toward the end of day 22, I returned to the mansion, still needing to figure out where to get watermelon from. I dove into the local mines on day 23 through 25, mining for as much gold as I could find. I didn't get incredibly lucky, but I did find some good veins. However, during my mining trip, I noticed some caves had quite a bit of redstone. Strange. I quickly disregarded it though when I found diamonds. The two pillagers approached me again on day 26, and they wanted a bit of adventure, asking me to join them in causing more mischief in another village because I did so well last time. I joined them, and this time they attacked and drew away the villager guards while I went in. My illusion and I corralled the other villagers into a pen and went to loot their stuff. The pillager captains must have known I needed watermelon for health potions because the village had a good stash. Then I met back up with the captains and we headed on home. The majority of day 27 was spent at the cleric illagers brewing stand, creating some health potions that apparently I would desperately need in the fight to come, along with some extra to share with the other illagers in hopes of getting on their good side. Day 28, the general approached me with another mission and two vindicators following him. Welcome back! I'm one step closer to being ready to face the redstone monstrosity. Good to hear! But as I'm sure you're aware by now, the mountaineers are still a thorn on our side. We can't deal with the villagers if the mountaineers are causing mischief too. Yeah, I've run into them a couple times. We need to make sure they don't become too confident in attacking us. So, we're gonna retake one of our outposts back from them and show them the folly in their ways. That doesn't sound like much of a stealthy operation. You can still use your natural gifts, but you'll also be leading these two illagers into battle. A leadership test, so to speak. Um, I'm not sure I'm the leader type. Don't worry, true leaders aren't born. They're made. Your mission is to take back our outpost at the edge of the forest. A group of pillagers will meet you there. Understood? Yes, sir. Good. The Ark of Ochre has high expectations for you. I'm sure you'll live up to them. Now get going. The two illagers and I traveled through the forest toward our outpost. They didn't seem too keen on following me, but they were not about to disobey orders. When we arrived, the pillagers were scouting out the tower, anxious for a fight. I sent the vindicators in to attack along with my illusion, while the pillagers and I shot at the mountaineers. We definitely caught them off guard and managed to quickly defeat everyone outside. The mountaineers were no match against the vindicators in close quarter combat, and with the outpost secure, the vindicators and I left the pillagers there to report back to the general. I'm very impressed. Nice. You seem to adapt easily to any situation. Thank you. It's an honor to serve. Now, I have another more important task for you, but I will divulge this information at a later date. For now, rest up and I'll speak with you tomorrow. I headed back to the library to sleep as I felt more comfortable surrounded by books than I did the elder folk. On the morning of day 30, the general quickly stopped by and told me that the next major mission would be more dangerous and that I should improve my equipment in order to succeed. So I went deeper into the mines, mining diamond after diamond until I had enough diamonds to craft a full set of diamond gear, which I covered up again with my magic. For day 34 and 35, I was tasked to take over the large mountaineer outpost I found close to the mountain. The general gave me command over a larger group of villagers and one of the ravagers. He charged into battle to take on all the mountaineers at once. The general thought the outpost would act as a good foothold in the region, allowing us to extend our influence to the northern villagers, as well as thwart the hopes of the remaining mountaineer forces too. Once we broke through the gate, we cleared out the last of the mountaineers inside and left a pillager party there to defend it. Day 36 was spent gathering more food for myself, as well as different ingredients for the illager chef as he was cooking a giant feast for an upcoming illager celebration. The next day, the general tasked me with the construction of a wizard's tower for the Arch Evoker. The build required me to jump back into the nether to gather basalt, blackstone, as well as plenty of crimson wood, leading me to some pretty intense moments of anger from nearby piglins for destroying their home. I also needed nether brick, which I succeeded in getting after stealthily
successfully stealing some of the pillars holding up another fortress, while hoping the whole thing wouldn't fall over. While relinquishing the pillars of their valuable resources, he saw a piglin in the distance decked out with fiery spiky armor, and it was collecting some blue crystals, very similar in fact to the ones I had seen in the redstone mines. I returned home at the end of day 38 and spent the last bit of that night and the next two days in building up the wizard's tower. But before construction was completed, I would need to create a central chamber for enchanting the Ildra's weapons and armor. I put the build on pause as I would need to come up with a plan on getting the resources to finish that room. Early on day 41, commotion broke out in the mansion. I saw several villagers rushing out the front door, so I followed them to a huge battle against villagers. I summoned my illusion copy again, and we aided my brethren from a distance with my trusty bow and arrows. The attack must have been a retaliation from what the pillager captains and I had done. Our reinforcements helped push back the villagers though, causing their remaining troops to retreat as dusk drew near. So some of our forces set up a temporary campsite to guard our forest, and the rest of our troops headed back to the mansion. As the sun peaked over the horizon on day 42, I returned back home from the encampment, and the pillager captains approached me again, suddenly jumping in the air like rabbits. They thanked me for not saying anything about their extra raid, and shared some water breathing potions with me, saying they'd come in handy later. Before they ran off, they turned around and told me I'm not as weird as everyone says I am. After that weird encounter, I wanted to borrow a horse, quickly travel back to the redstone mines, and face the redstone monstrosity. So I went on over to the warden's house because the general told me he had a horse that I could probably use. It was a quaint little home tucked away in a nearby birch forest, and the warden was happy to help in whatever way possible to finish off the last of the redstone army. Apparently, there were more. So I took his horse and rode quickly to the redstone mines, only to find an empty cavern. So I headed back to the mansion, a little disappointed, but also slightly relieved. The general approached me again on day 43, this time with the more dangerous task I needed armor for. And the redstone golem escaped, he knocked over a cage that held a wandering hero. That hero was spotted and followed by a pillager out on patrol, leading him to the secret tavern of the Wandering Heroes Guild. Rumor has it, these wandering heroes re-emerged from the shadows to defeat the mountaineer's leader, the Isologer. The general took a while to tell me about the guild and how they were tough adversaries, not to be underestimated, for sending me off with the pillager scout toward the tavern. The archer of Ochre thought he eliminated all these adventurers and had the last one in prison, but with a handful of heroes left and their secret base now found, it was my mission to burn down their tavern. We arrived at the tavern on day 44, and I sent the pillager back home to ensure his safety. For the first time, I tried to summon two copies of myself, but the second illusion didn't fully appear, so I sent my one helper to go release their llamas as a distraction while I set their tavern ablaze. They quickly defeated my illusion and began to chase me. I started to run toward their bridge, arms flailing, when I noticed a boat below, so I jumped over the ledge, stealing their boat and sailing to safety. Hopefully, with their tavern gone, they'll disperse and leave behind their heroic ways. I reported back to the general on the night of day 45, and he was very pleased, now knowing why the archivoker had chosen to summon me. I also was told to finish the wizard's tower soon, so our evokers could get to enchanting weapons for our troops. For days 46 and 47, since the battles were getting more fierce, I tried to work on improving my illusion magic, and I thought I'd try some new things. I successfully was able to conjure a bigger version of myself this time. Then, feeling more confident, I slowed down and tried to focus on summoning two copies of myself at once. At first, not succeeding, but then, with a deep breath, I was finally able to do it, before it quickly faded away. The second time, though, was a lot easier, and soon, I could easily conjure two illusions to fight for me, and I got pretty good at controlling them. Most of the other illagers were a bit terrified of my abilities, but near the end of day 47, I noticed the warden watching me while my illusions sparred each other. He asked me what exactly happened when the redstone golem became the monstrosity. I told him what happened, and he nodded and said thought as much before heading off, not saying another word. A very peculiar guy. Day 48, I asked around for advice on how to make an enchantment table, and one of the vindicators I led into battle told me I needed to get a book, a couple diamonds, and some obsidian. He led me down into a cave and said to look for lava pools, because they have diamonds nearby, and I could pour water over lava to get obsidian. He threw me a spare bucket, and I spent the rest of that day collecting diamonds and a lot of obsidian. I just needed books to craft all the bookshelves I would need, so I spent the next few days traveling to some of the villages nearby, using my illusions to distract the guards so I could steal the books from their libraries. I also took the opportunity to steal some food from them because I was starting to run low again. On my way back on day 53, I got lost and stumbled upon a strange redstone tower with energy shooting up into a giant crystal. I had never seen anything like it before, so I tried to sneak in to investigate, and the power emitted from the ground all the way up through the tower. It made a humming noise, so I was afraid to touch it. I followed the current of energy to the dome connected to the tower where the redstone monstrosity sat dormant, and the golden axolotl from before stood off to the side.
outside. And all of a sudden, the goat spat out an arrow, awaking the redstone monstrosity. So I jumped down and ran at the monstrosity. I was barely able to hurt it, but it definitely hurt me. And it began to summon a horde of redstone cubes, which I was definitely not prepared for. I ran away trying to shoot at them, so I took out some blocks and built upward to escape, leaving them trapped. Then I summoned two illusions to focus on taking out the redstone cubes, and then I could turn my attention to the monstrosity. Since he was so big, he could reach me while I was still up top, but it was easier to evade his attacks. And the healing potions definitely came in handy. It took a long time and tireless attacks with both my bow and sword before the redstone monstrosity finally toppled over defeated. And my illusions and I cleared out the rest of the redstone cubes, and that's when I noticed the redstone monstrosity's head was the only thing to remain. So I picked it up and went to search for the goat and axolotl. But it was now night and they were probably long gone. Also, there was no more energy emitting from the tower. When I left that place, I had an eerie feeling and I didn't feel that victorious. On day 54, I arrived home and reported the victory over the redstone monstrosity to the general. This is fantastic news. The Ark Evoker will be very pleased. I'm glad I'm able to help. For some reason, I don't feel like the fight's over. Right. We now have to turn our attention to the growing threat of the mountaineers and villagers. It seems that our raid on them earlier didn't have the intended effect. I mean with the golem. He was defeated, but the place I fought him at seemed to drain him of his power. Something dark is brewing. Oh, and what's going on with the villagers? I see. We'll stay alert on the matter. It seems that several villagers are pulling together the resources in order to gather their strength and strike back at us. And the mountaineers are continuing to leave their mountain and they're attacking our supply lines. Well, luckily, they don't really like each other either. What will we do? We will continue to monitor the situation to find a suitable response. Either way, you've earned yourself a good rest. Take the rest of the day for yourself before finishing up the wizard's tower. Understood. After talking with the general, I went to get some food from the illager chef and we spent a while chatting. I woke up feeling better on day 55, decided to knock out the remainder of the wizard's tower over the next two days. I finally got to build a great enchantment room with four different enchantment tables. I also added a place to brew potions and a place for someone to live in, which I planned to stay in until someone needed it. The wizard's tower turned out great and I was excited to show it off to the evokers. The next day, I got some of the evokers to check out the tower and they liked the enchantment room a lot and now seem to like me a lot more too. They took some time to teach me about enchantments, but when I went to go use it, my vision went dark and I heard whispers telling me to seek out the elder one. When my vision returned, I saw the sun was already setting and the evokers were gone. After enchanting my gear, I decided to go to bed and sleep off whatever just happened to me, but still wondering who the elder one was. For days 58 and 59, the general had some smaller missions for me. The first was a group of villager guards who set up a small encampment in our forest. I led a small task force there and we took over the camp, keeping the spoils for ourselves. Then we were tasked with pouring lava on a mountaineer village of igloos while they were away. And there was also taking back another outpost from the mountaineers. I could tell the morale of the other villagers were lifted after accomplishing these missions. On day 60, I went deep into the forest as not to scare any illagers and practice creating three illusion copies of myself. I really struggled with it as it took quite a bit of concentration and energy to conjure up and control them all. I did succeed a couple times, although only temporarily, until I noticed the goat and axolotl traveling together. I followed them for a little while, remaining unseen, I saw them enter a nether portal. I tried to follow them through the nether and was successful for a while, at least until they got on some striders. The axolotl actually got in the strider's mouth for some reason, and they ditched me over the lava lake, so I just headed back home. On day 62, I spent some time in the mansion summoning multiple copies of myself and using them to distract and scare the other illagers now. It became easier for me to conjure three duplicates and also led to some pretty hilarious moments with the illagers running away, but it probably didn't help my already lacking reputation. The pillager captains found me again on day 63, ready for another adventure. Still got those water breathing potions with you? Of course he does. You do, don't you? Yeah, I didn't get rid of them. Great, we're going to need them where we're going. Follow us. I followed the pillager captains back to the prison where we visited an imprisoned cartographer. The captains gave him some bread and he gave us an ocean monument map. Now we're talking. Let's hope it's the one that the arch evoker wants us to go to this time. I'm sure it will be. The arch evoker wants us to go there? Yup, now let's get out of here. We took the boat I stole from the wandering heroes further and further out to sea until we saw the underwater temple beneath the surface of the water. One of them pulled out a trident, using it to attack the creatures that swam in the waters, distracting them while the other captain and I swam inside, chugging our water breathing potions to make sure we had plenty of time. We worked our way inside and came to the deepest central chamber. We fought the guardian and it took quite a bit of effort and some scary moments as it bobbed around in the water and attacked us with its powerful beam, but we eventually took it down. The captain went to the back of the chamber and retrieved a special block of some kind, stating that it's exactly what the arch evoker wanted. While he did that, I heard strange whispers and images of a giant blue illusioner flashed in my mind's eye. I then saw a 
locations of a swampy temple and a dark room, but was then snapped back to reality when the captain told me we had to go. So we swam back outside, regrouped at the boat, and headed back to the mansion. We gave the Archivoker the special block on day 65, and we observed as he used it to summon his own undead troops. He succeeded, but his creation didn't follow his orders, and they just wandered around aimlessly. And that night, he told me to take the block to the Nameless One, the king of the undead, deep in the jungle for further study. He gave me directions and his horse, sending me on my way just as the sun began to set. Day 66, I met the Nameless One as he sat on his throne atop his temple with guards surrounding him. I gave him the block and he thanked me, impressed at my initiative, traveling tirelessly through the night. I told him it wasn't a problem and that I was really happy to help. He then proceeded to give me some strange zombie flesh, telling me that it was still living and asked me if I could deliver it to a friend, as he didn't have anyone that could get it there before it expires, since his troops can't travel during the daytime. I agreed and followed his instructions, eventually coming across hive looking structures and bees buzzing around everywhere. I cautiously entered and was called from above. Hello there, stranger. What's an illager doing around these parts? Um, I'm here to deliver some zombie flesh. Ah, from the nameless one. That scallopy is such a honey sweet dear sometimes. Yeah, here you go. What's it for? It is needed for one of my top secret experiments. So be sure to give him my thanks when you see him. Will do. It is much appreciated. By the way, I love your beautiful robes. Ah, bee puns are the best. Uh, thank you? My pleasure. Now if it's not too rude, I've got to head off and conduct more experiments. Progress doesn't happen by itself, you know. Feel free to stay here for the evening as it is growing quite late now. Bye bye! I think I'll take you up on that offer. That night, I slept in the honey fields behind the bee castle under the starry sky. The next day, I returned home to find the outer walls of the mansion had been attacked, leaving a giant hole in our defenses. I asked around as to what had happened, but no one was really sure as to what had happened as it occurred in the middle of the night. So I took the initiative to patch it up and then made my way back to the wizard's tower to rest. I decided to go exploring on day 68 and came across some ruins where a large golem laid down. I snuck past him and carefully avoided a trap, making my way over to a large chest, and inside the chest was something called a ghost cloak. I grabbed it, not knowing what it could do, and turned around to find the large golem standing behind me. Hey! Put that back! Oh, you scared me. That doesn't belong to you. You have no idea what you're doing. It was just sitting in this chest, and I thought this place was abandoned. And that instantly gives you or anyone else the right to take something? I, uh... You villagers are all alike! He hit me, so I jumped back and tried to use the ghost cloak. Then he couldn't hurt me, and I ran right through him. Now that's a neat trick. I ran away from the ruins, leaving behind an illusion for him to defeat. But as I headed home, thought about how the illusion would not have dropped the cloak I took. But maybe he wouldn't notice. On day 69, I I went to steal more food from a village, using the cloak to avoid combat while my illusions caused the mischief. And on day 70, the general gave me the quest, finding out who or what attacked the mansion. The next couple days, I investigated around the nearby lands, this time remaining stealthy to avoid unnecessary disruptions, and eventually found an altar with a soul campfire on top. Redstone blocks surrounded it in a strange pattern, and I heard explosions off in the distance in the direction of the redstone mines. I went to see what had made those noises, but upon my arrival, I found nothing out of the ordinary, except some more redstone that seemed to spread like a virus of sorts. And when I left to return home, I was attacked by villager guards that must have been traversing the forest. I quickly used my illusions, bow and arrow, and my ghost cloak and defeated them with ease. But just before heading home, I saw two wandering traders in the distance watching but not attacking. I still quickly fled. On day 73, instead of returning home, I had a weird desire to find one of those locations that had been shown to me by the Elder One. I felt drawn to a shabby stone temple in the middle of a swamp. It appeared to be long abandoned. The only life nearby were creepers and zombies stumbling around. Well, I snuck inside and found nothing apart from some broken stone statues and an old chest containing void mantle robes. I quickly put them on and instantly felt connection to the great beyond, now being able to easily summon more illusions of myself. Not noticing how far I traveled, it took days 74 through 76 for me to find my way back home as I got lost two different times and I also stopped a few times to observe the zombies, skeletons, and creepers I came in contact with. If few of them I saw had become affected by the redstone. I even saw some of the creatures attack a small group of villager guards, defeating them with ease, like the redstone dust gave them special powers. At the start of day 77, the general tasked me with fighting off a large group of mountaineers near Jagged Peak Mountain. They were defeating illager scouts sent out that way, which stopped communications with our distant outposts. I selected a small team of illagers to take with me, and we took a couple days to travel out there, camping a couple times due to the harsh snowstorms. The mountaineers would obviously have the upper hand with the 
the storm raging, but we were determined to win. We arrived to the outpost to see the mountaineer forces had set up some camps around it. I directed my elders to attack in two different groups, flanking from both sides. My illusionary copies and I charged up the middle. This tactic worked out brilliantly. We defeated the mountaineers with ease. We all looted and pillaged the camp before we headed off home to report to the general. He was very pleased that we had succeeded, but was a little frustrated having to fight on two fronts with the villagers too, as we only had so many forces to spare. On day 80, I decided to rest up and focus on preparing myself for any more missions to come. I brewed some more healing potions, got some cooked food made by the illager chef, and then got the blacksmith to make me a new sword per the general's orders. Then, I spent that night meditating with my void mantle robes on, strengthening my connection to the void, and making it even easier to summon a strong force of illusions. Day 81, I was sent out to patrol the surrounding areas like a pillager party. That afternoon, I was followed by that strange golem from before, and he confronted me again. Are you going to return what you took? Okay, if it's that important to you, I'll return it. Hmm, what is your purpose in this land? My purpose? The reason for your being here. You do not look like a native to these lands. I'm from elsewhere. And my purpose? I'm not sure you mean. Let me rephrase it. What missions do you have? Defending against the villager threat. Defeating the mountaineers. The mountaineers? Yes. Perhaps this could be advantageous to both of our causes then. I will let you keep the ghost cloak if you promise to continue your fight against the mountaineers. They enslave my people and force us to fight their wars. We have a deal then. I guess all illagers are not alike. The golem left and I went back to scouting out the area. The next day, I headed off to spy on other nearby villages and I saw one villager with emerald armor who seemed to be going from village to village training the locals. I watched them from a distance and they seemed to be pretty organized than before. I was planning to continue to follow the special villager back to his base but then I had another dreamlike episode where the elder one appeared along with a picture of a dark cave. I began following the whispers far away, dodging any groups of enemies that I saw in case my vision became blurred again. I eventually arrived to a cave entrance, pulled out a torch, and reluctantly entered it. Deep in the cave, I found statues of many different beings, all looking toward a strange chest. I cautiously opened it, finding a void mantle hood, along with an obsidian sword and an enchanted bow. I adorned the hood and felt that same rush, that same connection to the great beyond as before. I quickly returned to the surface, and with a surge of power, I summoned a huge illusion of myself. My power felt like it was growing exponentially as I traveled back on home. Over the next three days, the villagers mounted several attacks. They tried to take over different outposts and push their way toward the mansion. Oh, why are they going so aggressive? They've never been like this before? Not for a long time. Something is causing them to become more confident. What does the Archivoker think? We need to discuss it in depth, but it's one of the many reasons that he has summoned you to our aid. You can definitely do some things in ways that our forces cannot. Let me know how I can help. I'm confident we'll claim victory. Just keep working on improving your illusion skills for now. I traveled to one outpost we heard would be the next target and began summoning several copies of myself to defend it. Surprisingly, as dusk settled on the land, mountaineers attacked instead of villagers. With the combined efforts of the pillagers and my illusions, we did manage to prevail. It seemed like villagers and mountaineers were working together, but this was not the case. Because as I was returning to the mansion, I stumbled upon a huge skirmish. Villagers had marched against our illager forces, and in what seemed to be their last major hurrah, the mountaineers joined the fray, attacking both sides. Many soldiers were lost during this battle. It got to a point where every side was so fatigued from battle that the remnant of those left retreated from whence they came. I didn't know if this would be the last of the fighting, but for now the resistance seemed to be quelled. After taking some time to rest, the pillager captains and I were tasked to deliver supplies to our surrounding outposts over the next few days. We brought fresh food, medical supplies, and troops to each outpost, bolstering our defenses and preventing the mansion from being attacked. During the nights, I summoned some illusions to keep watch while everyone rested. We did run into a few stray mountaineers that put up a fight, but most of the time it was a fairly smooth journey. Although, on our way home, we passed by the redstone tower from before. The pillager captains wanted to check it out, and while they were doing that, I noticed the giant floating crystal was missing from atop the tower. We didn't think it was that important, but I'll tell you now, we were so very wrong. On the morning of day 91, the general officially announced the feast to be taking place in three nights time. He directed everyone to be vigilant and to work together to prevent any further attacks against the mansion leading up to the gathering. For the rest of day 91 through 92, I assisted the elder chef in gathering ingredients for the feast, as well as helping the general in collecting some more wood and iron for the crafting of tables and chairs. We took some time to set up the room for the feast, while the general told me the feast was meant to be a booster for the morale of our troops and to see if they could get help from the Nameless One and his undead forces in preventing more rebellion. On day 93, while we were setting up the last of the decorations, a scout returned from the nether portal within the mansion. He reported that the usurped Piglin King has emerged from hiding, wearing strange new armor. The scout caught him talking to a goat and axolotl at a giant forge. They seemed to be making a huge 
huge golem out of nether blocks, empowering him with a giant red crystal. The Archivoker took me aside and tasked me with going into the nether by myself to defeat it, as he couldn't risk sending his army and causing an outright war with the piglins. He said no golem could be good news as he threw me a couple potions, but that mission would have to wait until the next day because we needed this feast to go well first. That evening, the Nameless One arrived for the feast and all the illagers gathered to celebrate the achievements of what they had accomplished so far. The Nameless One and the Archivoker invited me and the General to sit with them. The Nameless One was really impressed by my achievements in such little time, and the Archivoker stressed how important I was to his plans, thinking about making me his right-hand man. The Nameless One was inspired, stating that he had his own plans for getting a right-hand man. The rest of the evening went flawlessly, and the General was glad there weren't any attacks during the time of the feast. In the morning, I met up with the Scout and followed him into the Nether. It took some time to travel through the treacherous terrain, leading me to the forge-like area where he had seen the netherite golem. Upon arrival, I saw this netherite monstrosity was eerily similar to the redstone one I already defeated, but it looked much more intimidating, engulfed in blue flames. I also saw the missing crystal was there too, but it was drained of energy. I told the scout to be on the lookout for any piglins, and I went in for a closer look. The stolen staff, the prison escape, the tower, all led to the creation of this monstrosity. It didn't look like anyone was around, so I summoned several copies of myself, including one giant one. Then, we charged the monstrosity. I shot an arrow at it, and it quickly woke up angry. My giant illusion went to meet it in hand-to-hand -hand combat, and this netherite beast packed a powerful punch as he slammed the ground, breaking the things around him and knocking his enemies into the air. My other illusions and I shot at him from a distance until my giant copy fell in battle. Then, the monstrosity turned his attention to us and began to pick off my other illusions. Whenever his adversaries were too far away, he would spit explosive bits of lava out, making it difficult to outmaneuver him. I tried to run into attack, but I could barely land any hits before being launched into the air. I had to summon in more illusions to help, and I felt both my health and my magic feeling drained. When I finally got his health low enough though, I ran in for the final blow. He let out a powerful roar before falling backward defeated. Then he crumbled into a really cool hammer. After the battle, I was heading back to where the scout was and he was fighting off a group of piglins. I tried to rush to his aid, but it was too late. So I got my revenge on the bunch that knew we were here and then hid before the reinforcements saw me. I spent the next couple days spying on the piglins to see why exactly they wanted to summon such a tough creature. They were really shocked to find their netherite monstrosity missing. They left to inform their king, so I tailed them. It's really hard to try to keep up with Piglin while staying out of sight. Eventually, we found the king collecting those blue crystals. He was exactly like the scout described and was not happy to hear his creation was missing. He yelled at them and said he will regain control of the nether at any cost. Then he left, striding off on his own. I tried to follow him, but the amount of Piglins made it impossible to remain undetected. So I spent day 98 traveling back to the nether portal to report everything. Curious who overthrew the Piglin king? On the evening of day 99, I finally returned to the mansion and was sent to the roof to be greeted by the Archivoker, General, and Warden, who were waiting for my return. See? I told you you'd make it. Hey, I knew you'd make it out. Tell us everything. I informed them of what had occurred in the nether and confirmed that the Piglin King has indeed returned, as well as told them about his apparent plans for the nether. The Warden and General were impressed, giving me a nod before heading off. The Archivoker was most pleased and made me his right-hand man, putting me in charge of the wizard's tower I had built, as well as all of his mages. On day 100, I stood stood atop my new home which towered over the forest and beyond, wondering what my place in the world would shape out to be. I also continued to hear faint whispers from the Elder One, who I sensed was also pleased with me. And that's how I survived 100 days as an illusioner. Thanks to Ex Nestorio, Forest Bono, Painful, Swidge, and Glitzcore for helping me make this video, to Luke the Notable for starting the 100 days trend, to my patrons for supporting the channel, and I want to give a special thanks to Dragon City for sponsoring this video. Remember to use the link in the description to get their free game along with the bonus food, gold, and dragon to start your adventure off right as you build your very own empire. Thanks so much for watching.